Hi, welcome to this SSRS tutorial video and today I'm going to show you how to create gauges. A gauge is a visual representation of data. It's used mainly with, with dashboards, it's very it, obvious, it's very graphical, it's um, usually used for high level summarised data rather than granular data. Um, and it's there to kind of be obvious so you take a look at it and you can you can see immediately kind of what the what the um the gauge is supposed to show you what sort of what, what the data is so i'm going to show you how to create a gauge i'm going to show you how to manipulate it and um change the way it behaves change the way it looks there's loads and loads and loads of options when it comes to gauges loads of different types and styles of gauges first of all and then loads of options within each of those styles so i'm going to show you how to create one main gauge we'll look at um how we can go about changing it and then i'll show you the other options of other little gauges other different types of gauges so first of all i've got um like with all of my report videos i've created a set of data that i think works good with the report i want to show you um, and in this case i've got a data of the last nine years of ballon d'or winners and um those that have been nominated so those that have come second and third the runners up if you like so here are the list of the players that have featured in the last nine years um in the top three uh, these are the eventual winners and these are the nominations for the for the um for the players as well so here we can see messi nominated eight times in the last nine years and won four there's ronaldo modric one one nomination and won it and then you've got these here that comes either second or third at some point so what i want to do is i want to put a gauge here um that will kind of show this data uh, maybe a little bit um a little bit better so let us just go to design here let us create a new column to put our gauge in and within our column we right click and we go to insert and we've got an option of gauge so i'll stick a gauge in here and we're all sorts i apologize for the um how small these icons are but we've got lots and lots of different options of gauges um loads and loads of different types i'm going to choose the the, the first the default radial gauge so if i click ok um in fact i want to run it it looks very small and it is very small and if i run it you'll see it is a very very small you know it's far too small to kind of um see any detail the whole point of gauges is it's supposed to be big and in your face so let's go back to design let's make this gauge bigger the way we make this gauge bigger is to make the cell where the gauge is sitting bigger so if i make the row um taller you can see the gauge is getting bigger i'll make it bigger still and you'll see it doesn't get any bigger because the column's now too narrow so if i start making the column wider it makes it a little bit bigger and see if it's big enough to preview yeah that's a little bit better so right now um i haven't set anything up with the gauge so the gauge is just showing kind of the default view of the gauge there's no difference between them all so let us now start setting up our gauge so i'll go back to design um, I'll make it a little bit bigger just because of demonstration purposes. So let me just do that. Okay. Um, so the gauge is in different parts. If I click on the gauge, um, right now I've just clicked on the cell. If I click again, I've now selected the gauge. You can see there it's got uh, um, an outline with the, the little handles on but also within the gauge there are particular elements so one of the elements is this bit the pointer and i can click on it you've got this bit here um this kind of bar here this indicator and click on that oops and then also there's the numbers that go all the way around it and i can click on those so in each of these are different elements and each of these different elements can be um manipulated so let's begin first of all with just selecting the gauge on the right hand side we've got this thing here that says radial um, pointer which is this thing right now we don't have any columns associated with this pointer so we've got one radial pointer it's called radial pointer one if i click on the drop down below it i can assign this um one of my column values so i'm going to say it's going to be the bd winner the ballon d'or winner 
if I click on that. Um, and now I'm going to click back on preview, and we should now see a little bit. Here you can see um, that this now it indicated it's ideally showing four, but maybe not. Oh yeah, it is showing four. Four. Um, further down you've got one, and then the rest of them are showing nothing. Um, I can come back here. I can add a second. So if I click back in my um, the the main outer gauge here, if I right click it, I've got an option to add a pointer. Let's add a second pointer, radial pointer two, and I give it um, my other value, the BD runner denominations. If I click on that, now we've got two gauges. Um, so it's getting a little bit more informative, a little bit neater. So let's go back to this. Now we've got two gauges. You can see I can I can select this gauge or I can select um, this gauge. I right click on this gauge now, um, this pointer rather, and now we've got options um, for our pointers. So if I click on my pointer, um, what I'm thinking here is I'm just going to change the colour of it. So if I go to the fill, it's got an orange colour. I want to change it to whatever colour that is. And that then, if we click on this, we can see the different pointers. Um, our gauge is currently running 0 to 100. And our nominations and our winners aren't going above 10. Uh, it looks like because of the data that I've chosen. So let's, let's change this range to be a little bit more sensible to our um to our data so let's go back to design let's click on that element you can see now i've highlighted that the range here if i right click on that we've got an option where it's called the scale we've got the properties and within here we've got a uh, minimum of zero maximum of 100 so let's change that to be maybe let's change it to be 15. Uh, we'll click on that and now we should see a little bit better um, the data we're dealing with now um, we've chosen not to 15 by default um, our scale uh, is showing 0 3 6 9 12 15 so if we've done it um, if we change our our scale to be uh, not to 20 that should change the intervals should change. So if I just go back to that and look at the intervals here, the intervals are now two, four. Oh, what's this? I don't even know what that one is there. Because um, that's oh two, four, six, eight, ten. So it's now in intervals of two. So what actually I want to do is I want to right-click on my skill properties and change that. So let's go back to fifteen because I think fifteen is a good maximum. Um, and the interval is by is auto. So when it was not to 15, the, the intervals were in three. When it was not to 20, the intervals were in two. Here I want to see every single interval number. So if I change that to be one, it now shows you zero, one, two, three, four. Yeah? Okay. Um, now I've somehow... Mm, I've somehow lost the um, the third element, the uh, the the range, that little bit of red that was there. Can't think how I deleted it. Um, let me see if I can. Oh, there you go. So if I add a range, ah, oh, there it is. There's a range. So if you remember, I had a range here. Um, the thing with with these gauges is it's kind of because everything's individual. You can click on here and you can um, delete it quite just by pressing delete. Um, so I'll undo that. I presume I had a, I did have a range here. I presume I deleted it by accident. So there's my range here. So if I highlight my range, I can now mess about with the range. So I can say um, my range properties. Um, so in here you've got a start and an end. So it's starting at 0 0.5 and it's ending at 3. So I can say no, I'll start at, one, at 0 and end in 15. And you can see that representation now. So if I click on that, you'll see there's the full range. Actually, maybe 
Um, maybe I don't want it to go that far. Maybe I want it to go not to 15, but maybe I want it to go to the the nominations value. So if I click on that, now you can see that the range is going with the nominations. Um, and also what you can do if I go to my oh sorry that's my gauge properties if I go to my range properties you've got options here of of the width so the width is is 15% maybe I'll make it 15% there and I'll make it um, maybe I'll make it 20% going down to 5% width and you can see now it starts larger and gets thinner um, or if you don't want any gradient at all honestly click it again sometimes it is a bit fiddly if I go to my range I can change that to be 30 and it will keep a sorry 20 and it will keep a constant width um, you've also got this placement here if you want to change the placement so you've got inside um, means it's going to be inside of the uh, gauge You've also got um, outside where it disappears to the outside of it if there's room. Or if you choose cross, it goes over the, the numbers a little bit. So here if I choose cross and I reduce the percent distance from the scale to be 5, you'll see now, or maybe 10, you'll see that it's kind of going over the, the numbers somewhat. Um, and also lots and lots of options here. Um, you can add links to it. Um, you can choose a different color for it um, you can choose a so solid I just want it to be solid rather than a gradient and I want it to be that blue so now it's just a solid blue color um, although actually it's more effective oh, can I click on that there you go um, what's more effective really I think if we go back to the fill is you can choose the gradient which was there by default blue to orange and you can see now the the gradient it's just a little bit more visual um, ok so that's kind of a quick whistle stop demonstration of the gauge um, like I said, there's lots and lots and lots of options you can do with gauges. If you come into here, you've got lots of um, different ways of changing how it looks, um, linking to different reports. You've got all sorts of, if we choose the, the, the colour, you've got all sorts of ways of manipulating the colour, um, adding um, expressions to change the colours. So you can say, you know, if this is less than this, then change that to be a different colour. Um, all sorts of different things you can do. Um, what I want to do now, though, is if I delete that gauge and let's just create another gauge. Um, yep. So we've got all sorts of different types of gauges. Um, you've got these radial gauges, you've got these linear gauges. So you've got something that looks like a thermometer. Um, click on that. Let's see how that looks maybe it needs to be wider that looks a bit better so now within here um, there's your pointer um, and this is where you'll say actually I want that pointer to be um, my nominations and then you can I assume you can somehow add another pointer in the same way so they all kind of work in the same way they just look different so here we'll say how many times they've won um, and the second pointer go to properties and we'll make it a different colour and ideally we should kind of see something um, should green so now let's look at that as a preview so you can see again we've got far too many uh, far too big a range there so let us change the range uh, no it's not the scale must be the gauge properties Oh no, it was the scale, sorry. So if we change the scale and change it from 0 to 100 to be 0 and 15 like we did last time. So all these options are the same. Um, slight differences depending on the, the style of gauge that you've chosen, but um, they all work in the same way and they all generally have very similar options. 
okay that's the end of this video on gauges i hope it was helpful uh, if you've got any questions or feedback please um leave them and i'll, I'll respond to them um it's all appreciated any feedback's appreciated thanks very much for your time see you next time